Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we'll be looking at 5 console features that Stadia will make obsolete. We're not here to say that console gaming will be wiped completely, or that streaming is the definitive way we'll be playing games. These are simple pros and cons to help inform you on whether you should make the transition to Google Stadia when it launches later this year. In a new feature called Crowdplay, you'll be able to simply click a button displayed right in the stream and jump in and play with YouTube creators that you're watching. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The console itself. Easy and instantaneous to move that same game experience from exactly that moment onto the phone, here on a Pixel 3 XL. It may be obvious, but it's one of the most bittersweet features of Google Stadia. The platform will be console-less, and when asked by The Verge if Stadia will ever get a console, Vice President and General Manager Phil Harrison responded with the resounding, we don't need it. By eliminating that friction, that barrier to entry, we will make it simple and easy for players who want to try Stadia for the first time. While it's nice to know we don't have to worry about dropping a few hundred dollars on new hardware, it is a little bit weird because consoles have been around since the birth of gaming in the 70s. Are we really prepared to dismiss this part of culture? We'll have to wait and see when Google announces Stadia's pricing plans this June. Which will build experiences designed exclusively for Stadia as Google's own first-party game studio. Discs and cartridges. Welcome to the 8-bit Hall of Fame. In the rows and rows of games. This sort of goes hand in hand with the absence of a console. With Stadia being strictly built on cloud data and streaming, gamers won't have to worry about losing discs or cartridges of their favorite games. This may be beneficial for those who don't want physical copies, but the lack thereof has now created another problem for the community. How will anyone be able to access a game's files? Learning what is working best and sharing key tools and tech so that we can take games to the next level together. While this does help prevent piracy and hacking, the modding community may become frustrated with Stadia, especially if certain games become platform exclusives. Unless Google provides an alternative, fandoms will have a whole new obstacle that may never be conquered. And uh, really, you know, I do it because I love video games and I have such a great collection. Downloading and installation. Compare that to today, where gamers are all too familiar with things like this. When we made the jump into the eighth generation of consoles, we found ourselves with a new dilemma, downloading and installing games. Due to the size of AAA games, buying a new game isn't as satisfying as it used to be. Before, you could pop in the disc and start playing immediately. Nowadays, it can take hours before you can play a new game, and discs now serve as unlock keys rather than storage of the games themselves. With Stadia, this waiting game will be a thing of the past. Luckily, Stadia won't have that problem. Because games will be streamed, users can start games within seconds without worrying about downloading the newest update file or getting that, quote, ready to use lie when the game is still installing. The power of instant access is magical and has already transformed the music and movie industries. And with Stadia, it is now available at the highest level of gaming. Storage space. Add extra game storage. Get an external USB 3 hard drive that's at least 256 gigabytes in size. As the gaming industry has progressed, games have gotten bigger and bigger. While this eliminates the need for buying extra flash drives, hard drives, and SD cards, it's possible that Stadia will have a monetization plan where users can pay a monthly fee for storage space. And when you have spent an entire evening downloading a title in the first place, the last thing you want to do is delete it and potentially have to reinstall it at a later time. Unfortunately, some people live in areas where they're already restricted on data usage or just have unstable internet. We may not have to worry about storage space as much as we used to, but the fact that Stadia is a streaming platform is going to force many to ask, at what cost? Gamers will carefully need to consider this before dropping money on a potentially mediocre service. So for a developer, the entire internet can become your store. The comfort of being offline. But with Stadia, that game client and server both remain on Google's networking backbone. More and more games are demanding players to always be online, and that isn't exactly a good thing. Not everyone wants to be online, and not everyone can be. Remember, Google Stadia is a streaming platform, which means you're going to need a constant connection in order to access your games. Meaning your gaming memories will be saved at the highest possible quality. Stadia is not constrained by the limitation of traditional console systems. Even if you can maintain the 25 megabyte requirement, what's going to happen when your internet goes down? How much progress is lost? What do you do if you've made a complete switch to Stadia? 
Many people play offline games for that reason, and Stadia doesn't seem to have a resolution for that, at least not for the moment. Those who indulge in single-player experiences may not want to jump aboard Stadia's hype train just yet. We will have increased performance significantly to support resolutions up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.